Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we're going to be talking about a science fiction film called Guns. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. The main character K is a college student in the process of getting a job interview. He has the habit of getting distracted like most of us are guilty of. K takes the subway like usual, but this time he sees a familiar face. The man's name is Kato, his childhood friend, but they haven't spoken for a long time. He hears a loud bump and turns around to see that someone has fallen down into the train tracks, but everyone just stands there and expecting the other person to help, resulting in no one helping. Kato takes a deep breath and jumps down into the tracks, trying to save the drunk man from being killed. He sees K and tries to ask him for help, but K pretends like he doesn't know who Kato is and tries to weasel out. The crowd manages to pull the man out with the help of Kato, but the train is approaching very quickly. K sees this and offers his hand, but gets pulled in and the two gets hit by the train. When they open their eyes, they're still together, but in a room where there is a large black sphere. There are other people here as well, but no one seems to be talking. They try to get out by the windows and doors, but everything is locked. They're sure that they were hit by the train, but how can they be alive and in this weird place? Others tell them the same thing, that they died and somehow just arrived here. The black sphere lights up, and K sees a feet, then a hand, and a body materialize right in front of him. It turns out to be a woman named Kishimoto, but she's naked and soaking wet. Kato puts his jacket on her and stops another man from doing the unspeakable. The black sphere starts acting up again, but this time it plays this creepy music. Everyone is shocked at what's happening, except for one man who appears to be wearing a combat suit underneath. The sphere tells them that they're dead and that it controls their new lives now. It then proceeds to tell them to kill off a creature called the Onion Alien. It pops open with guns and armors on the sides. As they approach the sphere, they also see a man sitting inside. They open the suitcases with their names on it and seize combat suits, same as the ones worn by the man before. No one puts on the armors though, except for the woman who arrived naked in the first place. Their bodies begin disappearing while everyone panics. They're teleported to an intersection, but no one seems to be around. The man with the armor introduces himself as Nishi and claims that they're in a reality show where they need to kill the alien to win a prize of $100,000. They see the alien from afar and with the encouragement of winning money, most of them rushes towards the alien without any questions. They manage to corner the alien in a garage, and one of the men shoots at it with his gun. Nothing appears to happen at first, but then the alien's arm explodes. It tries to fight back, which angers the whole group, resulting in everyone shooting at it, causing it to explode everywhere. Just when they're planning to collect their prize money, another tall figure appears behind them. The Yakuza tries to intimidate the mysterious figure, but his leg gets chopped off while being lifted by one hand. While struggling, he knocks off the wig of the tall man, revealing it to be the alien's father. The group shoots in fear, but only manages to hit their teammate, causing him to explode as well. K arrives at the garage, only to find Kato backing out in fear. Just when he's about to be killed, Kishimoto tackles the alien, sending it flying into a wall. Her strength is magnified by the suit, and I'm sure they must feel pretty silly right now for not wearing it. The alien recovers quickly and manages to neutralize the team very easily. K finds his armor missing in the suitcase, so uses it the only way he could. Just when they're about to be killed, the alien is paralyzed by a gunshot from afar. Nishi was following them this whole time and used the people as baits. He shoots at the alien's head, it screams in pain while it explodes everywhere. They're taken back to the same room, but everyone that died stays dead. Surprisingly, the old man managed to survive as well and is teleported back safely. Nishi tells everyone that the sphere is called Guns and it assigns missions for killing alien invaders. The informations of the dead are kept inside the Guns database, including everyone from previous missions. Gans gives Nishi 5 points for killing the alien, but nothing for the rest of the team. Kato tries to get some answers from Nishi as this is obviously not his first rodeo. But Nishi overpowers him and doesn't want to offer any help. 
K tells him to let go, but the fight is cut short when Gun sends them all away. K wakes up in his room and has trouble believing everything was real, but he proceeds to see the after damage of previous events, such as the train incident that occurred. He has trouble focusing in class, still thinking about what happened last night, while a girl secretly draws him. Obviously, she's got a crush on the man, and personally, I would have asked her out by now. K tries to find the room he was in yesterday. To his surprise, the entire building is missing. He goes to where they fought the aliens and sees that Kishimoto is there as well. She still has the jacket from Kato and wants to return it to him personally. But K says that he moved 10 years ago and doesn't know where his current address is. She then surprises K by asking whether if she can stay with him tonight, to which he agrees immediately. It's obvious that the girl doesn't want any action with him though, since we find out that she was kicked out by her boyfriend which caused her to commit suicide. But our main character doesn't care and grabs some protection just in case. They accidentally find a notebook in Kato's jacket which gives his address and shows that he was in juvie before. Meanwhile, Kato gets nightmares about what happened, but his little brother tries comforting him. He hears a loud screech and sees himself disappearing in the mirror. They appear in the same room again, but this time with three other strangers. Guns tells them that their target is the Tanaka alien. Kato tries to tell everyone to put on the armor, but the new people are too shocked to listen. The grandma and her grandson gets teleported first and meets the alien right away. It opens up its mouth and vaporizes both of them. K catches sight of the alien mid-teleportation and nearly gets killed by its blast. Just when he's about to be finished off, the alien fires to the side and gets a direct hit on Nishi. It flies towards him and continues to knock him down to the underground parking. It continues to hit him until his suit has malfunctioned and no longer offers protection. Kato jumps down and saves Nishi by throwing the alien away. His strength combined with his suit manages to squeeze the alien until it faints away. They check for Nishi's vitals, but he's dying very quickly. He tells the group to get 100 points so that they may revive him. But personally, I would hesitate to revive a psychopath like him. The alien jumps up and begins attacking the group. Kato tries to protect Kishimoto and gets knocked around like a ragdoll. With teamwork, they manage to land many hits on the alien, but it seems to be extremely durable. It goes after K and repeatedly strikes him, but K manages to tap into the suit's potential and punches the alien away. He proceeds to pummel the alien and knocks him into a car, damaging its face. It tries to use the laser blast again, but K shoots it with the gun, causing a large explosion. K managed to kill the alien, but also blew his limbs off in the process. Luckily, the timer on guns runs out, and K is revived into the room before he dies. He remembers what Nishi said about the 100 points, and asks guns to explain. Apparently, when they reach 100 points, they have the option of reviving someone or setting themselves free. They are sent back by guns again, but this time K wore his battle suit. He intends to practice using it, getting ready for the next mission. His new superpowers give him some confidence as he asks the girl out from his class. She shows him the manga she drew, depicting K as a superhero. Kishimoto finds Kato's address and gives him a surprise meeting. Through their conversation, we find out that Kato killed his father, but only because the man was abusing his little brother. He can't die now, as he needs to protect and care for his brother. Kishimoto assures Kato that he will survive. They are teleported by guns to the room again, this time with many more new people. Kato tries to tell everyone to put on the suit, but a monk spewing nonsense makes it very difficult. Gans tells them that their target is the Buddha statue, and they are all teleported away. K sees the statue in front of the temple and proceeds to examine it closer. To all their surprise, the giant starts moving and begins stomping on the group. They scatter and some of them runs into the temple looking for shelter, but it seems that they found something even more sinister inside. The group surrounds the alien, while K tries to take it on by himself. Although enormous, the alien is very quick for its size and dodges all the gunfires. Eventually, K manages to outmaneuver it from underneath and destroy it by shooting its head. 
Just when they felt the mission is over, the timer on guns is reset. They see one of their teammates come out from the temple, wounded and near death. The three enters a room full of statues and they find the monk's dead body, full of cuts. Suddenly, Kishimoto notices that a statue of thousand-armed Buddha has moved behind K, and it proceeds to attack him furiously with all its arms. K is wounded badly as blades puncture through his body. Kato pulls him to safety and tells K to rest. Kato admits that he has always admired his friend and proceeds to attack the alien. Although Kato gave it his best shot, the alien was too fast, and just when it's about to deal the finishing blow, Kishimoto jumps in the way to protect him. She gets impaled everywhere and drops onto Kato's arms. In her last breath, she tells Kato to survive and reunite with his brother. Kato becomes furious with the death of his friend and charges at the alien, but gets destroyed very quickly by its swords. Seeing his friend wounded to the point of near death, K gathers his last resolve against the monster. He charges towards the alien, but realizes very soon that he can't beat it in close combat. He sees the gun across the room, and jumps towards it while the alien attacks. He takes the gun and fires it at the Buddha, but it blocks the attack with his swords. The alien drops a small statue on the floor, and it rapidly grows into a giant, breaking through the ceiling of the building. It launches its fist at K, which destroys most of the roof in one blow. In the face of such powerful enemy, K is unsure of what to do next. Kato, with his last remaining breath, throws the gun at K, which he catches and shoots at the Buddha's arm, destroying it while running closer to its head. The alien opens its mouth and swallows K, but he manages to fire shots in the giant's mouth and it screams in pain while it's blown up from the inside. He runs back to his friend, holds his hand while telling him not to die. K begins to teleport back to the room while Kato remains motionless. K sees the remaining survivors but fails to see his friend. Kato's image appears on the screen, verifying his death. K tells Gans to bring Kato back, but he only earned 20 points in total. He cries while believing that there is no way he can last until then. Feeling hopeless and helpless, K is unable to function his normal life. He becomes depressed while walking in the subway station with his girlfriend. He jumps down to the train tracks and tries to commit suicide, but the girl pulls him up, saying that she loves him and pleading for him not to die. With the realization that there are people who loves him and cares for him, K resolves to fight with his teammates to revive all his fallen friends. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.